Everybody is doing well on this Monday morning. I actually know what day of the week it is today. Um, so this is Paint with Lovejoy. We are going to be painting a hummingbird painting today. And this is a viewer request. And I'm just refreshing the feed to make sure everything is showing up correctly. Perfect. There we go. All right. So a little bit of what you're looking at on the canvas. We've got a few things going on. Um, you can see that there's a design and there's texture on the background. I am reusing canvases, um, and there is a link in the description box below on how to reuse, repurpose, regesso a canvas. And this is a great way for my beginner painters to get a lot of paintings under their belt without buying a bunch of canvases and without um, spending a whole lot of money. So check that out. Um, a little note on that, if you are making a painting for a friend, I do recommend using a brand new canvas and not a reused one, um, just so it looks a little bit nicer. And the other thing that you're looking at here is we do have our outline today of our hummingbird. And at the end of um, this demo, I will upload this traceable to my website. And if you want, you can purchase the traceable, download it, and use carbon paper to transfer it to your canvas, and then come back to the video and pick up on the painting portion. And the traceable is a nice way for my beginner painters um, to kind of get that initial image on their canvas before they start painting. If you don't want to go that route, pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the video again um, for the painting portion. So a few options. Um, my channel is geared towards first time and beginner painters. Uh, I've kind of been dubbed the adult kindergarten teacher. <laughs> so I'm here just to show adults and first time painters and even kids just that, you know, you're a lot better at painting than you may be giving yourself credit for. So if you guys have any questions today, please feel free to um, leave a comment in the chat. And uh, hi, Dennis, or Denise, sorry. And hi, Gwen, thanks for jumping on. And like I said, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and I will go over those while I'm painting. So for today, we're gonna have a various blue background. Um, we are gonna have a bit of a green, a hummingbird with a really pretty throat and I think we're gonna do purple tail feathers and then I'm not sure if I'm gonna add a flower but you're welcome to add a flower onto your painting and I'll talk about options as we get towards the end but um, yeah so I am doing brush work today that seems to be kind of the trend this week and I'm enjoying it so I'm gonna start with a light blue first and so I'm pulling a little bit of that white aside tiny amount of blue goes a long way to make your light color first and I do recommend that you start making your color light and then you can always add a little bit more pigment and it makes it a little bit easier transition as you're mixing your colors. All right, and we're pretty much just gonna kind of slap this in a few random areas. Uh, I really liked the last two demos, um, the kind of splotchy colors that we did. So I might end up doing that on this one as well. So as you apply your paint, try a few different brush strokes. Right now I'm just kind of doing the X marks, the back and forth, but you could also do longer smoother brush strokes you can turn the brush sideways if you do want to paint with a palette knife you could do that as well um, if you want to finger paint go right ahead and do that and as i mix today's background you can tell that i'm actually just grabbing a little bit of color each time i'm intentionally i want a few different shades as i'm slapping these colors on here so i don't want you to plan too much as you're painting your background and just grab, you know, different random shades of blue and we're going to slap it on there and then we're going to blend just a little bit um, on top of that. And kind of some of this randomness just gets you out of the groove, gets you out of your normal thinking process right now. Um, and it feels like that might be appropriate for today. Now, as I continue to fill in the background, likely I'm going to chop off the beak of my hummingbird. So if you do that on yours, don't feel bad. We can re-put it, reattach it um, after we get that background on there. So when you're working with acrylic paint, it is a very flexible medium to just kind of play. If you end up painting something or you do what I just did right there where you paint over the wing or I'm about ready to paint over the beak, acrylic paint dries and it stays pretty solid. So after it dries, you can put another layer on top of it. So very flexible, very versatile medium. Um, let's see, now I'm actually gonna grab some of that white and just slap it on there. And then we're gonna go back through all of this and just make little X marks and just kind of play with blending of these various shades. All right, and jumping over. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Linda. 
glad you guys are able to join us. All right, so now that we've got some various colors on here, and if you do want to throw some purples or teals or other colors in there, go right ahead. We're going to be going around each of these, making little X marks and kind of blending. And you are going to notice that as I come up close to the edge, I will actually overlap my hummingbird. So if you do that on yours, that's okay. But again, these are just tiny little X marks back and forth. If you want to do that stabbing method, kind of like this, you stick with whichever uh, blending method you are feeling like doing today. And if it's a little different than what you did yesterday, that's okay. Each day we're a slightly different um, emotional makeup of a person, of how we're feeling or what's going on. So you, when you're painting, you do have to kind of take yourself for where you're at today and what you feel like it. With that being said, if you feel like changing something in the middle of the painting process, trust your instincts and go for it. This is one of the few places that you can deviate from your original uh, path. And half the time, it usually ends up turning out better when you trust your instincts and deviate from that path. So full permission to do what you need to do when you're painting. All right. And this is actually quite stress relieving just to slap all this color on there, literally just kind of dig your brush into it. Um, if you do have stuff, specific things that are irritating you or causing you anxiety, think about those as you're stabbing your brush into the canvas. And um, it is pretty hard to poke a hole in the canvas, but, you know, maybe be a little mindful of that pressure. And if you do, that's just, again, part of your painting for today. But painting is a highly creative and therapeutic outlet. And given what's going on in the world, we all need this type of outlet badly. So do not deny yourself the pleasure of being creative or the pleasure of painting. And if you end up not liking painting, try another creative outlet so you can still have some source of creative relief in your life. And as you're filling up this space, if you need to go back and grab more of your colors or anything, or if you've added it and you go, oh, I want lighter here, I want darker, go ahead, adjust your background to whatever you want. And it's easier to do it now while your background is wet and you can do the blending compared to going back later and possibly you might just have to repaint the whole background. All right. Looks kind of cool. Kind of different, lots of movement. I was trying to do a slightly different texture from some of the other ones that I've done on the demos. All right. And I'm gonna take a quick look through the screen. Oh yeah, it looks good. I'm gonna actually go back with a little bit more of the straight blue. I want a few places that are just a little bit darker. And then we'll move into our hummingbird. And again, no rhyme or reason, just slap it on there and then maybe wipe that brush off and then I'm gonna slap that darker color into it. Again, this is your escape from the world while you're painting. Hopefully you forget about politics, you forget about news and your stress and the rest of the world for a few hours. And that part actually got a little darker than I wanted, so going back with white, slap it on there. Again, it's always a back and forth and you will find your own balance. If you're holding your breath, take a big inhale. Even if you weren't holding your breath, still take just a big inhale. And relax. All right, oh, hi, Sonia. Thanks for jumping on. Hope you are doing well. Okay, so that's looking pretty interesting. All right. Okay, so now I'm actually going to clean the brush really good. Let me move my reference photo. I'm changing a few colors from this photo. Okay, so we're going to start and we're going to lay a green base in here. Um, this is going to give some of that background a little bit longer to dry before we get to the wings and the tail. So you can either stick with that middle brush that you were, I was using earlier, or you can move down to the small pointy brush. 
Um, as you get into smaller details, those small pointy brushes are very nice for that. All right, so for a shade of green, I start with yellow. I want this to be kind of a bright spring green and then slowly add your green until you get to the shade of what you want for your hummingbird. And again, if it's a little different than my color, totally okay. We're just using this video and what I'm doing as a guide. And as you follow along and paint, you are strengthening your power of observation by looking at what you see me do on the screen and then doing your best of your ability to mimic that on your canvas, you are um, training your brain in a really efficient way. You're training it to look at something, interpret, and then apply for yourself. And the more that you do that, the more comfortable that process becomes and the easier it is for you to recognize certain aspects. So I am moving down to the pointy brush to get to the top of the head of this hummingbird and again, if you're using student grade paint like I am, um, you can tell that it's a bit on the transparent side. So I'm actually gonna go back with a little bit thicker paint and add more. So you've got options. You can either add thicker paint, and then, like I said, just apply it a little thicker with light pressure, or if you need to, you can do two coats of it. Let it dry and then put another layer on top of it. So you may just have to adjust things based on the tools that you have, the brand of paint that you may have, um, and adjust. And then even if you're painting outside, it's a different set of elements. Your paint's going to dry a lot faster outside compared to inside, and that may affect the way that you're going to be painting. All right, so I think we're going to stick with the pointy brush from here on out. So while this green paint is wet on our hummingbird, we're going to add some shadows to it. And again, I like not using black for shadows. I like using other colors. So we're going to grab a little bit of that blue and we've got a little bit of a shadow hanging out here on the belly. So we're just going to slap this color on here. We're going to come back and blend it in a moment. And then he does have a little bit of a shadow on his head, on his forehead, and it's going right above that eye. Literally just right hanging out above that eye. If you happen to paint over that with your green paint, totally okay. You can come back in with black paint and re apply the eyeball at the end. So now I just want you to wipe off the extra paint so that we have a bit slight of a dry brush and we'll go to that stabbing method here. And literally what we're doing is just kind of pushing that blue into the green. It's mixing with the green and you can see that the more that we move that brush, um, the more it kind of diffuses together. So I'm actually going to go to the bottom, um, reapply this one more time because I want that to be a little bit darker. So when you do this style of blending, it just helps with the pressure and brush control. So each time that you paint, your muscles are getting comfortable with holding the brush, your brain's getting comfortable at looking at what it looks like to mix colors, and the more that you do it, the more your brain retains that information. So be kind to yourself when you're in the beginning stages of painting because you are taking on way more than you're aware of, and you are learning a lot. Okay. So I'm going to clean that brush. We're going to go in with a little bit of yellow and we will let this dry before we come in with some brighter colors because I don't want those brighter colors um, for that little um, iridescent throat. I don't want those mixing with the green. So we're going to let that dry before we add it in there. But right now we are going to blend some of that yellow into this green. So we're going right up, kind of from the beak and then just kind of following a little bit underneath the eye. We're going to dab some of that yellow on there. And I'm going to grab a little bit more because this is going to get diffused pretty quickly. So wipe that brush off again, kind of a dry brush. And then keep with that kind of stabbing method. Sometimes it's nice, just like it's nice to say I painted with a knife. It's nice to say that I blended by stabbing. All right. Oh, cool. And let's see. Looking over. Let's see some questions. Uh, hi, Rhonda. Hi, Sonia. Okay, so let's see. Um, oh, good. So you use the paper clip, Denise, or toothpick um, when doing smaller stuff. So I'm glad that worked well. And let's see. Do you th Sonia's asking, do you think a humidifier um, would do justice for the drying time? I'm not 100% sure on that just because I haven't had to, the opportunity to do that. I, uh, in theory... I would think that it would help the drying time because the humidifier is trying to 
Oh no, the humidifier is adding moisture. I was thinking dehumidifier. So the a humidifier will probably extend the drying time because it's putting moisture into the air compared to a dehumidifier, which could possibly decrease the drying time because it's make it's pulling the moisture out of the air. Hopefully that made sense. Oh good. And Anita, I'm glad you're getting better with your blending. That's awesome. It just takes practice. Okay, so I think my yep, background's pretty dry. We're gonna use kind of a bit of a brown, greenish brown for the wings here. And then we will do a little bit purple for that bottom tail. So like I said, changing up those colors just a little bit. So I'm gonna grab some of the yellow or some of the white. We're gonna add a little bit of brown to it, kind of going for a light one. And this is a reddish brown. If you happen to have the raw sienna, the lighter brown, that will work just as well. And I'm gonna add some yellow to it. This actually, the yellow brings it a little closer to the raw sienna look. kind of just a, a super light, light brown. And I'm gonna go over this whole area and then we're gonna put some darker shades of the darker brown on there for to distinguish between each of the feathers. And this one, like I said, I'm just gonna be painting right on top of that background where I messed up or painted over. Happy accident, there's no messing up. And I am painting right over those lines. Again, remember to breathe. If you're finding that you are kind of shaky as you were applying your paint to the canvas, if you come down here and it's shaky, it's because you are holding your breath. So take a big inhale. And if you're still shaky, if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, you're gonna be a little less shaky. And through doing these videos, I try to learn to hold the brush in different ways so that way my hand is just not right in front of the camera. So I find it very interesting that the things that you do in daily life, where they show up in other places um, and how it changes. So the fact that I'm filming has changed the way that I paint and changed the way that I explain stuff. And actually, as I look at it, this needs to be a little bit longer. So I'm extending that, those bottom wings. There we go, that feels a little better. All right, so from here, we're cleaning that brush and I want to kind of keep a little bit of that tip and we're going to grab some of that color. Whoops, the drop of water on there. And on the underneath side of each of these little feathers, we're just going to do kind of our dark shadow line and then we're going to go back in and blend that. So again, it's kind of at the bottom of that little curve. Same thing when we come over here. And this one, just because they are feathers, I'm likely gonna just do a bit more of a smoothing compared to the stabbing method for blending. But you do whatever is feeling comfortable for you. So again, clean that brush off, wipe it off so it's a bit on the drier side, and then just coming with a light pressure and just kind of diffusing that into the lighter color a little bit. Whoops. And if you happen to get like a big chunk like that, just wipe your brush off and then go back to apply. And I actually ordered new panels and canvases yesterday, so I actually can't wait until I get those in. Um, I'm getting a little tired of painting on my regessoed canvases. So if you do get into regessoing your canvas, you will find things that you like about it, things that you don't. Um, they are great for practice, um, but there's a few other little things to just consider uh, as far as the texture, as far as it making it dry a little bit faster. But I'm also grateful I don't have a house full of just stacked canvases from all the demos I've done. All right, so we just kind of soften that in there. We don't have to do anything exact. We are going to come back over with a little bit of green on top of that, but we're going to go ahead and do our uh, tail feathers here. And we're going to do the same thing that we did in the wings. We're going to start with a really light color, and then we're going to go in with a darker purple to make our shadows. So I'm going to grab some of this white, come over here, Tiny amount of purple goes a long way. Like I said, we are just using a light color and I want it a little darker than that. Again, feel free to adjust if you prefer a color that I'm not using. 
feel free to switch it out. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, let's see. I kind of get into the painting. I forget to look over and look at questions. Ooh, cloud tutorial. Okay, good suggestion. That is not my specialty, but I will go through the method that I use for you guys. There are a million different ways to paint clouds. All right, so we definitely have our multicolored hummingbird here. So just like on the wings, just going right over each of the feathers. And again, if you're making these and maybe the feathers get a little bit bigger, that's okay. We're just really glad you're painting. All right, and at this point, it's one of my favorite points for the painting when there is no canvas space left. Even if it looks funky, it just feels better. All right, so clean that brush again. We're going to go in with just that direct purple. And let's see, on this one, uh, let's do the same thing. We're going to kind of keep it on the right hand side for each of those. And again, we're just kind of creating these lines on here. And then we'll go in and blend them. All right, and same thing, I'm going to do a bit more of a smooth, just kind of blending it, but if that stabbing method works better for you, or even finger painting to do that, go right ahead. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, you're just going for kind of a bit of an illusion. All right, so I'm actually going to go back to that green and yellow mixture. We're going to put a little bit right here, because they do have a little bit of their feathers hanging out. And while this is even wet, I'm going to mix a little bit more on the bottom. So I still have enough of my yellow and green mixed, but if you need to mix a little bit more, don't stress about getting the exact same shade. Coming within range is acceptable. And these are almost like little triangles on the wings. Again, we'll do a little bit of blending on it. And then down here, let's see, yep, it's kind of his little bit of his butt. So just extending that, it overlaps those little tail feathers just a touch. All right, so I'm gonna go in with that blue, a little bit darker. So we'll do the stabbing method on this one and then putting that on the bottom. So again, wipe that brush off. I got a little bit of water on that. Hold on. Let me add a little more blue. There we go. And if you're getting a little bit of purple into that when you were doing it down by the tail, that's okay because there is a little bit of cross colors, what we call reflected light. And this little shadow right here kind of shows that the body is in front of that wing. And then here shows that the wing is behind the body. All right, so we're going to use black. We're going to go in and refine that eye. We're going to go ahead and put the beak on, and then we'll come in with some really pretty reds. And um, oh, I forgot to throw red on there. So I'm going to throw some red on the plate, and we'll come in with that kind of ruby throat. All right, so for the beak, I am using black paint, and you've got two options. The beak is basically like a long extended triangle without here being the tip, and then um, on the, the head of the hummingbird, it's a little bit wider at the base. So if you want, start by putting your brush where the tip of the uh, beak would be and then pulling it back and you can use a little bit more pressure as you come in. If you end up making a super skinny line, just kind of fatten that line and make it a little bit wider as it comes back towards the uh, head of the hummingbird. All right, and now this is where that toothpick and possibly even paper clip could come in handy because we're going to redo that little eyeball. And I do want you to try to keep that white dot um, 
there. If you end up painting over it, you can just reapply it with white. Um, and for the sake of that argument, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So if you happen to fill in that whole little eyeball like that, uh-oh, it's okay. Just let that dry and I'll re-talk you through where we're going to place that white dot. All right, so let me throw a little bit of red on the plate since I forgot to do that. There we go. Don't need a whole lot of red. All right, and we're actually going to make this a little bit of pink. Maybe closer to magenta, maybe not a light pink. Yeah, that's too light. Let's go a little darker. There we go. All right, and then same thing. We're going to do this little stabbing method. So I'm actually going to start. And again, we're just doing this dots. We're not doing as much of the blending. That's why I wanted this to kind of sit on top of the paint. Nice. Now you're going to clean that brush. I'm going to grab the straight red. And we're not going to fill in that whole area, but we're going to put some um, deeper red little hues in there. And we're going to do the same thing with yellow. So a little more sparing with that darker red and clean the brush again. We're going to go in with that straight yellow. And it is overlapping that pink just a little bit. And then it is, I'm going a little stronger on that green. So this is a nice little highlight. And let's see, oh, a little bit of purple on the top of his head too. And it's that direct purple, pretty dark. And if you end up getting, um, you know, little bits of water that start dripping up from the metal onto your brush as you're applying more of the solid color, you may want to just go back over and tap your brush on your paper towel just to get rid of that excess water. Because if it travels from that metal piece down the bristles onto your paint, um, it could start to cut the paint back to the canvas. So just a few little extra tips. All right, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of white. So we're going to go for super light pressure and that little white dot. And again, um, if you need to use the toothpick or the paper clip, go for it. So we're going to replace that dot. So if you need to put your pinky out, use that as a steady pivot point, rest your forearm against the table. And we're looking kind of at the like if it was a face of a clock at about one, two o'clock. And you're literally just going to touch the canvas and pull your brush right back. We are going to do one other little highlight above the eye. And it's almost going to be like top eyeliner. So again, using that light pressure. Remember to breathe. <laughs> I was holding my breath there for a minute. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put a little highlight on the top of the beak. And then we're going to use some pure white to put some highlights on the wings and the tail. So on the top of the beak. And if you do what I just did to where it's a bit of a kind of a broken line, that's okay. Sometimes that looks cool. All right. So again, we're still using that pure white. We're going to get some highlights on here. And these are just going to be kind of little radial brush strokes that we're going to be putting on here. So again, whoops, had that water soaked on there. These do not have to be perfect, and if they're broken up a little bit, that's okay. You gotta imagine that the wings on this hummingbird are moving so fast. I forgot how fast, how many times a minute they flap, but they're moving so fast and conducting so much energy that we're just again getting that illusion of just how awesome these guys are in a painting. Um, let's see, I'm actually going to go back to a super light yellow mixture and oh, we're actually going to put a little bit of shimmery blue and purple here, just like we did with the pink. I forgot about that. All right. So for the blue, we're not quite going that dark blue. We're going about a medium blue. Do one a little darker than that background and same thing, just dot it on there. We are going to go over with that direct blue a little bit more, and then we're going to throw a little bit of purple in it too. Make a little bit more. There we go. A little more solid coverage. 
And this is kind of encroaching down onto his belly too. Now clean that brush. We're gonna go with the direct blue and then the direct purple. And again, these are just kind of random. It will mix with that medium blue just a touch. And then we're gonna clean that brush and do the same thing with purple, like the multiple shades that this little guy has on his chest. And those of you painting at home, if you would like to outline this, it would look kind of cool, that pop art style. If you do wanna draw um, a flower in here, it could be any type of flower that you want. Um, if you wanna make it 3D or multimedia, you could take a fake flower and actually glue it to the canvas. Um, no matter what you do, please send me photos of what you guys paint. Uh, email them, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. And yeah. Um, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave suggestions for what you want me to paint in the future. All right, and let's see, checking over your comments. Glad you guys like the hummingbird. Ooh, Glenn, Jen, glad you got a hummingbird to come to the feeder. Nice. Uh, glad you guys like this. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so definitely make these, give them as gifts. Um, like I said at the beginning, if you are doing the reused canvases, for gifts, please use um, a fresh canvas just so you don't have these other little extra lines in there. And if you are on a stretched canvas and you give it as a gift, flip it over and tape, take a Sharpie marker and write a message to that person on the back. Make it even more personable for them or personalized for them. So, all right. And I think I added uh, most of the suggestions from yesterday for the future uh, live demos. And if you wanna see what that is, um, jump onto the main page and scroll down and you can see the future live streams as well as the prior ones. And yeah, still going and you guys are keeping me sane. So I appreciate hanging out here every morning. All right, so I hope everybody has a great day and I will see you tomorrow. Cheers.